there are three of her lens baby photos that were shot with one lens baby product, which was Omni. When did you come across lens baby? What was your first lens baby product? it's been about two to three years or so. I was in need of a product for doing video that allowed me to use both of my hands. I had gotten other filters before or lens attachments where they screw on. It's more of a filter effect, which are super great, but can be limited. I had just done a Google search, was looking around for something that was going to meet my needs. I had come across the Omni. That's how I broke into Lens Baby. I just started with the basic kit. Pretty quickly fell in love with it. It really opened a lot of doors for me. I just loved how I wasn't stuck with one effect. I could make things more subtle or make things really dramatic depending on the project for weddings sometimes I don't always want to do something as dramatic but things like live events for music or music videos a lot of times I can do a little bit more that's acceptable for the project from then I just really started to expand that's what opened the door you came in with video in mind talk to me about the work that you do you mentioned music videos or live events weddings what kind of work is your core what is it that that you spend your time on I was just having a conversation with somebody about this. So I do photo and video. I came from like a fine arts graphic design career and slowly moved over. I was always told to niche down a little bit more. There's certain things that I will do and I won't do, but I would say that I do a lot of things. It's really involved with small micro businesses, artists, just capturing really special moments, whether that's individual portraits, wedding days, Anything within that, a lot of times it's working with people who are looking for something, maybe not super cookie cutter. My projects all vary as far as like the style and the look based on what people need versus sticking with one style. It's very wide ranging. Like I said, portraits, I do music videos, I capture live events, I do a lot of wedding work, anything, everything in between. You're looking for tools that are going to set you apart. You wanted something that would free up your hands, which the Omni allows you to get some effects that don't necessarily affect the entire image the whole time that you can move them a little bit more freely. I think you do that in your video clip. Let's jump into the images. You can tell us a story behind each one. Totally. What we have here is your setup on a very interesting looking camera carved out of wood, apparently. Talk to me about what's going on here. This is my main video camera that I use for video shoots. It's just like an entry level cinema camera. Okay. The handle is wood, but the body is actually like your typical camera body, but it's called a Zcam E2S6. It's got a Super 35 sensor. There's a monitor on top. The camera doesn't have any built-in monitor. You can see why I have that big handle there and then I have to grip on. I don't even have a strap or anything on this camera. I have to brace it on my chest, hold one hand on that wooden handle, then it's an all-manual focus camera. So I have to be focusing. I don't have the luxury, unless I'm on a tripod, bringing my hands to move things around. As you can see, the Omni creates extra little hands for me while I'm working with this camera. You got a lot going on there. You've got, it looks like you have the Composer Pro 2 with our new Composer Pro 2 Omni adapter, an optic with a creative aperture, probably the double glass 2. You've got two different Omni filters, both of them glass, a manual focus, obviously with Lens Baby, but you said it's always <laughs> manual focus. You don't have the ability to look through the viewfinder. You're looking up at a screen, but then you've got a rail down below. Is that detachable or is that, are you holding that against your chest to, to keep everything steady? You can detach the rail, but I always have the rail on there. With the Composer, it's a smaller lens. You can see just below it, there's a little V shape there. If I have a longer lens on, a 70 to 200, that's like a support that comes up. But you can move the camera forward or back if you need to, to adjust it for whatever reason. But I just have it all set up there because there's just things attached to audio that can be clipped onto it and everything that's just ready to go. Because it takes a sec to 
put it all together and take it apart. For the rest of us, it's nice to have Omni keep your hands free to do the work after you've got your effect where you want it. But it's yep. it sounds like it's necessary when you've got that much weight, you've got that much going on with a camera like this, with a setup for cinema. Let's move on to your first still image here. I want you to talk to me about this beautiful portrait. For these, I'm currently shooting a Canon R6, the mirrorless camera. This was for a recent collaboration I did with a local artist here in Minneapolis. He does liquid light projections, which I know a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's the old school projectors that we used to have in schools where it is like a little glass that shoots whatever is down below. He has two of them. He takes pigment color, or I think it's watercolor, oil. They're on glass plates. He mashes them together. It makes these really cool, you can see some of the like bubbly effects in the back of that. It was with the Velvet 85. It really let that background really blend in. Then I used one of the prisms that kind of have the color painted onto it, just right at the bottom to give it just a little extra. The thing that I mentioned before that I really like about the Omni is sometimes it's really fun to go all out, do all the things, like really put it in your face that you're using some sort of prism or extra. But with this one, it's just a really subtle kind of framing to bring out even more of that color, complement the background mm -hmm. just down on the bottom. Adding to the shadows a certain texture, what you have here in your first picture on the left, you have the color crystal that has that prismatic coating on it. It's a glass crystal. You're putting that toward the bottom of your image to allow for just bringing in elements that, that can fill in what may have been a little less compelling in your image to give something a little bit more interesting and mysterious here, as if this image needed to be more mysterious. <laughs> so you've got a full-time artist working on your lighting. His name is Heart of the Sun Liquid Light Show. We've done a few collaborations together. I have a studio in Minneapolis. He brings his projectors and we have to black out everything. The way we did these specific sessions is when people signed up to book the sessions, I asked them what their color preferences were. Everybody got to pick their colors. I gave them the parameters of these are the colors and he got to do his own thing. And I got to take the photos. Being a small business, someone who is a micro business does a lot on my own. It's nice to be able to let go of some of that control and let somebody collaborate, do their own thing while I get to take photos. Fascinating. We talked about the Omni color crystal creating the subtle effect and shadows down at the bottom. Tell me about the lens you were using, the focal length, the aperture. I was using the Velvet 85. The aperture was probably, usually I keep mine around the maybe like 3.2 to 4, at least for portraits specifically, because I like to make sure that the eyes of the subject are in focus for me. I just like some of that subtle crispness of the subject with just a slight velvety offset on the outside. True. I really feel like with the Omni too, it helps blend the that specific lens with the focal length. Omni working well at the 85 millimeter focal length is true because the longer the focal length, the brighter the aperture, the more mysterious that effect becomes, the less it looks like, hey, I'm holding a crystal in front of my lens. <laughs> the less about very obvious fractals coming into an image or very obvious effects that are coming obviously from a filter, the more it is about, wow, what's going on there? And that's what I see here too. It just okay. feels that could be a reflection. It probably is partly reflection. It could be a filter that has a texture to it. It could be a double exposure. Using that longer focal length gives you the, that more subtle effect. Definitely. I like a little mystery. There's lots in this image. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next mm -hmm. one. We've got another Omni image. It says, I've got my notes say that you use the Omni Seahorse, which yes. comes in that starter pack. Tell me about this image and why it's important to you. I love the Seahorse. It's my favorite. It's always my go-to. I actually have to sometimes force myself not to use the seahorse. It's everything that I want in a prism addition to a camera accessory. But these are lilacs. I have just a really big affinity towards lilacs personally. I really wanted to share this image because the other two examples are paid work. This is not paid work. It's always really refreshing to just go out 
photograph or capture things because I enjoy it. It fills my cup in that way. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to do something for restrictions based on the client. Lilacs for me are something that are very reminiscent of my childhood. They say that smell brings you back to a memory the quickest way out of all the sen- mm. senses that you have. We had a lilac tree that I used to play around as a kid all the time in my parents' yard. The seahorse did such a great job of picking up that sunlight to create the bokeh. I just really felt like it was a representation of how beautiful the flower is, but specifically the scent. It's quite a fragrant, magical scent if you haven't ever smelt a lilac before. Winters are hard in Minnesota. It's dark, it's cold, you really haven't gone out much by the time that the lilacs are here. It's a really exciting time because it's one of the first things that bloom. This just really felt like it embodied spring, the feeling that a lot of people in Minnesota have when the sun actually starts coming out. It's starting to be nice. As I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if you were to shoot this again, what would you want to capture that you didn't capture here or capture a little bit differently? I think maybe I could play around adding even more of wands. Perhaps there's in the starter kit, there's that rectangular long one Mm -hmm. that I feel like gives some nice reflections. Some of those could really accentuate some of the lushness, fullness of how many flowers there are. I love that this is an everyday thing. You walk by it in your driveway, you jump in your car, you leave, but you've made something special here that wasn't paid, that was just for fun. You you speak about this as if it's something that is really core to who you are, your memories. It feels very personal. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's go to your video clip here. I'm just going to I'm going to run through it once. Let's get to a spot where it has the, it has a double effect. It has lens baby Omni going on. Tell me about what your process was. Why did you involve both lens baby and Omni and how did it benefit you? This was a local Minneapolis artist. His name is Connor Lee, super talented. He approached me about doing a music video for a song that he had created. Connor and I had met at a coffee shop. He brought his laptop. I put the headphones on, sat there, listened to it. Right away, I was like, oh, this reminds me of a cozy, rainy day where you're just hanging out, maybe like drinking some coffee or hot cocoa or whatever. Not like rainy dark, but like rainy in like a light pitter patter, early spring or summer kind of rain. At least that's the rain here in Minnesota. He was like, oh, wow, that's spot on. I really like that idea. We just ran with it. There was a section of the video that I had pitched to him. I was like, I think it would be really cool if we made it look like we were shooting through a window with rain coming down. Between some of the shots, there's this effect where we use the double glass. I specifically used the double glass because I liked how the edges blurred. Mm -hmm. I felt like it accentuated the water droplets that would be coming down like it gives this almost anamorphic lens like kind of effect where the swirl kind of added to that where it would pick up a little bit we went with some of the other footage that we used had more of that like dark city light because when it rains it's darker out and then there's like when the streets are wet there's like reflections of lights and stuff the omni was really great because it complemented the non- playing images, the ones where Connor wasn't in, where it was just shots of the city stuff. He really wanted to have a look where it wasn't natural light. He really wanted to do some colors. In film, cinema, teal and orange is a super huge color combo that people will use. I was like, all right, we're doing rain. We're going to do teal. Orange is the compliments. <laughs> Everything all just kind of fell into place. Essentially what happened was he was playing in the studio and I got a big plexiglass sheet. We clamped it down. I had somebody spraying the window. It looked like there was rain coming down and then I used the Omni. Some I just kept it where it was. What I really liked about 
using the Omni was that I could move it. You could see because I kind of cross-faded, cross-dissolved mm -hmm. things together. But that movement that the Omni makes for really great transitions where it feels like it's melding together versus just like a cut 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 that was the vibe of the whole video is this like gentle moving throughout water type of feel it just made for the image to be a little bit more interesting because i have a small studio space in minneapolis you have to work sometimes to make it not look like you're shooting in the same space just between all of those effects it really helped make it a little bit more dynamic it gave it a little bit of texture just mimicked some of that stuff that happens out outside in a city when it's raining on the street. There's just tons going on here. You were shooting in a little studio, you wouldn't know that. You've added a lot of mystery to a shoot that you obviously had a vision for. Good job. Thank you. And to be able to listen to the music, marry that to a look, a feel that was consistent with what the artist envisioned as well. Love that collaboration. You've talked about a couple collaborations here that have produced some really amazing imagery. I come from a big advertising and marketing kind of atmosphere for about four or five years of my life where sometimes I felt like that was limiting because although there was a collaboration, there wasn't. It's really cool when you can get together with other people, make something unique in that way that you might not have stumbled upon if you were just doing things the way that you want to do. I think there's something just really beautiful. Like I think that's art in itself, like just the collaboration between the two people. I think we need more of that in the world. <laughs> that takes me to my last question, which is mm. what's one thing that you have done or do that pulls you out of a funk when you can't figure out what to do next? I had gone to a graphic design conference when I was still in college. A speaker, her name was Jessica Hish. She is a super talented designer, illustrator. Something that she really talked a lot about was a concept that I think she probably coined or maybe somebody else did. It was called procrasta working. Anytime that I ever feel like I'm getting stuck on a project or I'm frustrated, a lot of times I will work on something that I am excited about to get my motivation. Maybe that might be photo or video maybe that might be like my husband's a drummer sometimes I'll just go down and play some drums or do something else to redirect my energy because I've done enough projects to know that if I force myself to do something I'm gonna end up having to redo the stuff or it'll show through the work I try to redirect my energy in some way to help get some of the the creative juices flowing so that I can continue to work I love procrastinating working that there's a workshop there that once you teach, I will be there, but <laughs> there that sense of getting momentum around something you're excited about that you can then come back. For me, I like to use the term peripheral vision. If I can keep something that when I'm staring at, I'm stuck on, if I can keep it in my peripheral vision while I'm excited about something else or able to just check some things off that need to get done and lighten that load, even if they're not creative that can help me go, oh, that's what I need to do over here that I couldn't see when I was staring at it. It sounds like that's exactly what you're talking about. That's, exactly. I love it. I don't know how many times I've come back to something, especially with video. Oh, wow. That's how I color graded that. <laughs> Breaks are nice. Like it's always good to step away, take yeah. a breath of fresh air. Kelly, thank you so much for going over these three images shot with your Omnis, as it turns out, lens babies underneath the Omni, walking us through your creative process. There are a lot of really great gems in there. Your process of reaching your creativity, plugging into that, as well as collaboration, is, I find that very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you again for being willing to share all that. Of course, I'm always happy to plug lens baby. They're always my favorite thing to suggest to people. Happy to be cool. here. Excellent.